Hey there guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. So following on from my previous heresy video where we ranked the regular Legion Praetors, I asked and you guys said you wanted to see my list of the Terminator Praetors as well. So whilst I would like to cover things like the Traitor and Loyalist Primarchs at some point, today we are going to go through the currently available Praetors in Terminator armor and I will be listing them from my least to my most favourite. So. Let's jump right in. Now, unlike the normal Legion Praetors, which I thought were all at least pretty decent, there are a couple of the Terminator Praetor models that I do genuinely dislike, and the first of these, and lowest on the list, is the Space Wolves Praetor. It's just so incredibly second edition. The whole pose is so static and boring and flat. It's really, really uninspiring and frankly dull to look at. I also really dislike the mouth. It looks far too wide open and almost as though there's this giant gaping black hole that his head is being sucked into, into the suit. Even the weapon options are, let's be honest, rather plain and unimaginative and to be honest, he really wouldn't stand out, to me anyway, on the battlefield amongst any other Space Wolf Terminator. The next one on the list, and another model I really dislike, is the White Scars Praetor. Again, it's just so monopose and static. Both he and the Space Wolf Praetor have such stiff, straight legs. It really does take away any sense of movement or dynamism from the models, and at least the White Scar one has the cool bird which does admittedly look pretty funky, but I feel this looks more like a statue that you would see of a Space Marine in 40k, you know, something venerating a Space Marine in 40k, rather than an actual combatant leading a force, especially a fast moving force like the White Scars in 30k. Third on the list we have the generic Legion Praetor. And although I prefer this one massively just because of the pose on his legs, the fact that they're slightly bent and giving that feeling that he's had to plant his feet in the ground and is bracing to fire his Volkite immediately makes it worlds better than the previous two in my opinion. The only reason he is down this low is, like his non-Terminator counterpart, he just looks rather plain, especially in comparison to the unique style that some of the other specific Legion Praetors have. And so from that perspective, he's just not quite as eye-catching and stunning as some of the others. So the Space Wolves and the White Scars are the two that I really actually dislike. And the generic and this next one are the two that I'm very ambivalent about. They're not bad, like I said, but they're just nothing special. And so next up, we have the Thousand Suns Legion Praetor. He has the cool Coptec looking sword or axe in his hand, and I really do love the helmet. I just feel like the rest of the armour is a bit much, and he almost looks a bit top heavy in my opinion. The proto bunny ears above his helmet, and his shoulder pads that look like they're on top of some other shoulder pads look very cumbersome and distracting. And I also have a slight pet peeve about his cloak because, and I'm sorry if you start seeing this after I mention it, but I honestly can't help but see him in this weird half-off silk dressing gown. Especially from the back, it really looks like he's just getting into the shower and he's taking off his dressing gown as the water heats up. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but there's just a few things on this model that take away from the overall look, and even the fancy sword and admittedly cool helmet can't quite make up for it in my books. Next up, and don't shoot me for having his model so low again, is the Blood Angels. I know, I know everyone loves the ornate gilded gold on the Blood Angels models. They just always look a bit off to me, and this one is no different. His armour is cool and I love the sword, but for me there's just something slightly weird about the helmet. It almost looks like it's too deep and too low down in his armour, like he's struggling on his tiptoes to peek over the neck guard. It probably isn't helped that he seems to be aiming up slightly, so his head is naturally facing towards the sky a bit, but it just looks very awkward and out of place. And I would also say that compared to the regular Blood Angels Praetor, even the ornamentation and filigree isn't quite as impressive or beautiful on this model, and doesn't 
quite do it enough justice to lift it out of the sixth spot in this list. On to number five, we have the absolutely badass word bearers Praetor. Fully equipped with his semi skull helmet, the fantastic markings and rune craft all across his armour, and then the book on his shoulder and candles sitting next to the brazier above his helmet. Yes, I'll admit it's maybe a tiny bit too much, but it still just looks unbelievably cool and is very much in fitting with how I imagine the word bearers to be, absolutely zealous and fanatical even when it comes to how they kit out their armour. What really makes this model for me though is the gorgeous flaming mace. It's just so unique and fits that whole chanting kind of priestly incense burner vibe whilst also being a clearly terrifying weapon of war. The whole model just comes together in this great way that absolutely screams word bearer to me. The Alpha Legion Praetor is next and whilst again I dislike the antenna on the backpack, I adore the whole narrative of this model. His sword lowered, step up on the rock in front of him and you can just see in, in his lenses, in his eyes and in his aim, there's some terrified, cowering enemy in front of him just waiting to get absolutely blown away by his gun. It is such a powerful, story rich image that this model has and I would say is almost everything opposite to the way the Blood Angels Praetor appears with the Alpha Legion's Praetor having his gaze down, weapon slightly aimed low and that menacing evil look through his helmet visor. If you just compare it to the Blood Angels one, it's so much more fitting with the feel that I have for Astartes and really does just make this model an absolutely eye-catching, cool unit for the battlefield. Following on from the Alpha Legion, we have another Praetor that just screams out the character of its Legion and that is the Night Lord's Praetor. Even if you discount the flayed skin, the numerous collected skulls and heads from fallen enemies, or even the absolutely massive badass chain glaive he's holding in his hand, I just find the sheer arrogance and callousness in his pose and the way he's raising his Serpenta to just blast away at the enemy, it's almost uncaring and just so brutal. And it really just screams Night Lords to me. I do also adore his chain glaive. This one that he's holding is quite possibly the coolest weapon I've seen on any heresy model. And I really love how he has the Serpenta on his forearm rather than holding it in his hand. It adds a lot to the model itself and just makes it an incredibly cool looking centerpiece unit. You can almost imagine him pointing at your enemy with his gun, not even bothering to use a finger to point and the enemy just knowing he's coming for them and that chain glaive is going straight through their face. On to the final two now and in second position we have the incredibly badass Dark Angels Praetor. Once again, his whole armor is just chock full of awesome regalia, chainmail, winged motifs and knightly symbols. His helmet looks just like a medieval knight and the huge winged sword on his chest just screams this kind of 30k equivalent of this chivalrous deadly combatant. I really love how he is stepping forward and bringing the sword across his chest almost like he's daring whoever he's looking at to come and take him on. Like he's raised his gun and just said, okay, we're doing this man to man, sword on sword. You think you can take me? Come and give it a go. It just has this level of contempt and air of superiority that I think the Dark Angels really do have throughout the heresy. I will say I'm not a huge fan of the keys and the sensor hanging from his belt because for me, they're more of a 40K theme than a 30K one. But unlike some of the other Praetors we've seen, they are small enough that they don't clog up or distract from the rest of the model. And a lot of the time, they're subtle enough that you might not even notice them as you're looking over the rest of his armor and his kind of equipment. He is just, like I said for the other Dark Angels Praetor, every inch a knight of old in heavy armor and just daring anyone to try and cross blades with him. It's such a cool story and theme and the model pulls it off so, so, so well. And then so in the number one spot, we have my favorite Terminator Praetor. And as you might have guessed it, it is indeed the Imperial Fists one. And the reason he's in the number one spot is 
quite simply, he feels even more of a knight than even the Dark Angels one. I adore the fist motif across his armour, his helmet has that cool Templar's cross on it and reinforced lining to protect the crest of his helm. His sword, although we can't see it super clearly, looks really solid and thick and chunky like a proper broadsword. And then, unlike any other Praetor here, he has that huge, hefty storm shield raised up as he moves forward. There's just so much power and momentum in his pose and you can really imagine him taking one step forward after another as Lazfire and Bolter shots crash into that shield and just ricochet off around him. He looks so determined. I mean, even the style of his helmet makes him look like this indomitable force, look like an imperial fist moving up through the thickest of sieged warfare to take the fight to the enemy. And I just honestly absolutely love that. It really does just come together completely as this model that encapsulates all of the stubbornness and the immovable resolve that you come to expect from an Imperial Fist character. It just fills that entire niche completely. And so there we go, that is my list of Terminator Praetors. What did you think of my order? Do you agree with it or would you rank them completely differently? Let me know your list in the comments below. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I will catch you later, guys.